very good evening everyone. Welcome in to your box seat. Hope the holiday racing period has treated you well. Of course, we're here with uh, Woodlands who have a massive time ahead in terms of the sale. Joined by my good friend Michael Gear. And I'd love to say that you've had some time off, but <laughs> you've been busier than ever. ever. But uh, great to have the show back. It is. Uh, welcome to everybody. I, I do hope you've had a good Wednesday too. Big question for you and it's the question on everybody's mind. H have you missed me? Because um, we haven't seen each other for three weeks. Not one iota, no. Did you think about me at all? No consider. Oh, actually I did. When Abraham's won at Rickerton, I had to think about you because your name was in the race ball. Congratulations, by the way. Mm. Um, OK, in that case. <laughs> I, I was going to tell you I missed you a little bit. But no, <laughs> we know I, that I, obviously that's just one way love now. So um, the, anyway, the good news is we have a chance tonight, Gregory, to talk about all the things that you may not have seen or you might have forgotten happened. And then last night there was the barrier draw for the Hunter Cup. So it's kind of cool. We've come back at a time where... We've got a bit of a reunion of the team from the New Zealand Cup because the Fixer and Tiger Tara have only raced each other once mm. and the Fixer won. But it could be a different story. So barrier draw for the Hunter Cup coming up because that's this Saturday, Greg. So we've come back at the right time. But before we get into all that, a lot's happened since we were last here. Absolutely. So what about what you've got ahead on your show tonight? Uh, we've got all of the New Zealand action. We're going to wrap up the Country Cups and all those sorts of things. Uh, the Great Southern Star and the Derby. We've got to go back to last Saturday night to reflect on that. It is Hunter Cup time this week. The men had a good program last Friday night. They've got the Premier Mayors with Garrards this week at $50,000. Uh, we've got a few first up winners too, and if we've missed any of those, I'm sure you'll get in contact with us and we'll uh, endeavour to get them on the show over the next couple of weeks. Team Teal's pretty close to getting underway with Harness Race New Zealand again. And because the brand won the competition, you good. get to name it. That Pick was the good. brand. Yep. The, so the what we're going to do is have another punting competition because I won it for the first time in my entire life. Mm. And I bet the whale. And, I, and more importantly, I bet Mark, Mark McNamara. Yeah, and you which is thrashed me. And I'm going to continue to talk about And that. you beat the 12 year old, Forever. which was quite a good but result. But what we're going to do now is if you want to email us and come into the next punting competition, which starts next week, you can prove you're smarter than us, which isn't actually that. Do smart. we have a rule that egg roll? Errol no, er, er, Errol can't be involved mm. again. Errol, so don't bother emailing us. We'll tell you what we would like. We'd like <laughs> another female player. We'd like a female Absolutely. player. Yep. So if you're out there and you're watching, you think that you can either A, guess well, or B, select better than us, email us at some email address which they put across the bottom mm, of the there screen. There it is there. I think it's there. I can't really see it. Yeah, the box seat at tab.co.nz. But you anyway, go. so and, and then next week we'll start a punting competition. And if you win at the end, we'll give you something. <laughs> what are we going to give, know. We're gonna we gonna give them? We'll get a prize uh, you'll get, soon. You'll, you'll get a car. For next week. Yep. Really? Your car. Mm. No, no, okay. No, no, uh, no. Let's have a look at the headlines. Uh, what's been happening? Well, Josh and John Dickey, they have uh, been in a terrific vein of form over the last couple of seasons. So much so, Michael, they've got to 200 winners. Uh, Kelly's Delight provided that at Cambridge for them. Well, and for a long time, you think of the Dickies as being a Cambridge based team. Of course, they moved to South Auckland to a wonderful property out there at Rosslands. And Gee, they've, they've kicked a goal there, Greg. You know, not only with Trotters, which was their forte, but they've got a really nice pacer at the moment. And there are people who, if you went to the sales and you bought a horse, you would think, I'm happy to have a horse with them. The proof in the pudding for that for me is I bought one horse two years ago and they who I gave it yeah, to. Yeah, Kratos, of course. Chris Garrard, he's had a, a big impact on Australasian harness racing and racing in general through uh, the Garrard's brand and he got recognised for that. Uh, Kieran Manning will talk about her, the living legend. Uh, harness Race New Zealand have a new chief executive about to start soon and therefore Addington had to get themselves a new chief executive and Brian Thompson, who's been at that place for quite some time, uh, got that position and good on him, he's you, a good you, bloke. Good fella? He is. OK, yep. cool. Now, uh, next week we might try and get some IVs with some interviews with some of these people to see what they want to do with these places they're taking over. Peter Jensen taking over as the boss of Harness Racing New Zealand. And I think it's interesting, Greg, because I think there's so much going on with the Masara report and track closures and all that sort of stuff. People wouldn't mind some guidance from hearing at least what the bosses think they're going to do. Whether they can put it off, I'm not sure. But the attitude they're taking to this new one to five year period is going to be crucial because there's a lot of chat coming from the galloping community about what they're going to do and there hasn't been a lot out of harness racing about the next five years. I think a lot of people have been tied up with Operation Inca and they haven't had a chance to think about where we go next and at some stage we need to talk to the Auckland Trotting Club too because they've got an inter-dominion Greg, it's this year mm. back in New Zealand and you sort of wonder, well, how's that going to look? So, yeah, over the next month or six weeks, we're going to try and talk to some of these people in charge to see what they've got to tell us 
about the future of your game. Michael, each and every week in this new box seat for 2019, I'm going to bring you a fact. Well, I'm going to try to anyway. Did you know that on this day in 2011, bookmakers were banned in New Zealand? There you go. Oh, sorry, 2011. 1911, that'd be it. Hmm. Sometimes I wish they were banned in 2011. <laughs> yeah, well, it could be so. Um, 1911, so no, there's a, I didn't a, a know bit that. of a fact if, for you. If you have any interesting facts for us, you can send them through. Send them in. I don't want to come up with those but ones But I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Especially well, not 100 when, when did years they come back? When did they come back into power? 1995? Mm, was it that early? Well, I think they did for sport. I remember. Yeah, yeah so I would say it's probably about then. Mm. Around about then. I knew so. you'd be able to top me with that. Mm. But look, yeah. it's, it's an interesting time for the bookies because they've got this new website and I think people have calmed down about the website now. I agree with what I heard you say on air, that it'll take a wee bit of time, but within a month no one will be saying anything. If you actually I, get I round the functionality of it, it's, it's pretty good. Well, it's better, than, it's better because there's more options, but it's definitely targeted toward sports betters, yes. as it should be. That's an area we can grow. Um, yeah, I, I think... Harness racing bookmaking in this country is going to go through an interesting phase because we start. We need to reduce the percentages, but they want more money returned to the industry. But I think to be competitive, they have to let more punters on for a fair crack because, Greg, the pools in harness racing aren't big enough for your $1,000 punters who produce a lot of the money in the pools and the liquidity to bet into the tote. So I think harness racing needs to be fair and say to people, you can win 5000 otherwise your bettors will go to the gallops. That's just a fact of life. People just go, OK, I can't get on, I'll go to the gallops. And I saw a lot of galloping harness people at the galloping sales this week. And one of the reasons for that is, is the punt. Hmm. OK. So, you know, Interesting time, isn't it? Well, people don't like to buy horses, Greg, unless they can bet on them. Yep. And if you keep telling people you can only bet to win $2,000, if they're $1,000 punters, and most people won't, I respect yep. that. But some of the bigger players are. And if you keep telling, restricting people, I, I think uh, eventually, I think yeah. you drive them away from the sport. That's my honest opinion. Okay. Because in the gallops, the pools are big enough you can have those bets on the tote, on the tote as and not smash to. them. You try having a thousand on something at Cambridge on Thursday night, that the odds disappear and people go, "Well, this is too frustrating. I'm not going to do it." And it's become a big problem in Australia too. Over there, there's a minimum bet law in Victoria, which means the bookies have to let you on for a certain amount. I don't think we should have to go to that, but I do think that under this new computer system, if it's as good as they say they are, and the bookies are as good as they think they are, they should let people want to win more. All right, well said. Let's get into some of the stuff that's been happening over the last month. So we've got a Country Cups wrap, uh, for want of a better term, and we're going to get straight into the Roxburgh Cup and have a look for the horse widest out here, Queen Bead Barden. Of course, we know her from placing in the Harness Jewels. This is not easy to do at Roxburgh, come right down the outside and get up and win, but it was a cracking finish. It makes you wonder, Greg, sometimes these real speed horses, and she ran second in the Harness Jewels using that speed early, sometimes they might be best saved for one run, but it's such a tricky way to drive them. But sometimes that speed not used at the start can equate to speed at the end. But of course, the middle section will come into play there um, for one of the good guys in Ben Waldron. Yeah, exactly. And Craig uh, Thornley there, seven from 45. Uh, now she's got. Um, have a look uh, out wide there. This is the Cromwell Cup, and unfortunately they uh, they caught the bad weather, didn't they? Which was a real shame. But um, yeah. Zadaka winning this after running second in the Christmas Cup at Mata Carrara. Um, pretty brave performance from a horse that went around the New Zealand Cup. That's exactly right. You see the fact he went around the New Zealand Cup, you think, well, how is he not going to win this? But it's not easy winning at Cromwell off a handicap, but it was a strange old day at the office because of the rain. Yep, for sure. Uh, we now go to Sagwich winning down there. Uh, at Invercargill, this was the Northern Southland meeting. And this one trained by uh, Sid Breen, and uh, Sid's been in the game for a long time, and this was a booming late finish. Yeah, because a horse who I thought had reached its mark about six months ago, but it just goes to show with harness horses, you never know. Sometimes they, they progress, they strengthen up, and they turn into different horses. And so. Mark Hurrell doing the steering, and yeah. we keep saying his name on this yeah. show. He's G doing a great job. Gave him a big rap back in November. I think he sits well on the card. Comic book hero, now here's one of those horses, again, you thought it reached its mark, and then it's gone to the grass for the first ever time, and it's gone, hold on, this is fun, it's nice and soft, and I can run along, and if you get bored, you can eat it. <laughs> and as it turns out, for the derbies, he's got the job done, over top of the favourite there in Parker. So look, again, a horse who I thought could have ended up in the amateurs and stayed there, transition to the grass, Greg, sometimes, it just refreshes them, and Todd McFarlane drove him inch perfect. 
All right, here's the Nelson Cup, and this was probably the feel-good story of the month. Dad and Dave. Tim Trathan driving for his father, John. A Nelson uh, local, of course, he is. Dave McHugh, who owns the oldest hotel part, owns. And uh, Tim driving this himself made it even more special. A big moment for the family. Huge moment, and one of the few times you'll see someone who's the same size as their horse winning a race, because <laughs> he's not very big, this horse. I've tried to back him a couple of times, and I'm, I watched him prelim, and like, I thought, oh my God, he might run under the mobile. But this was a standing start, and Timmy's a great guy. Everybody loves him. I'm thrilled they got that sort of result, and it's not the richest race in the country, but it's a cup, and you can't take that away from him. And here's the Marlborough Cup, and Klesina Maria, she's been beautifully placed throughout her career by Paul Young. Jessica Young got married to PGG Wrightson's Cameron Grant last Friday. This was a special win for them. She actually won a race at the Mott on Sunday to boot, but won the first day and backed it up by winning the second day. You talk about little horses, she might have the shortest legs in harness racing. Not, not Jessica, the horse. Um, look, that's, she's just a little tiny thing. She loves the grass and she's just very, very game. Fun at the Beach made it four cups in five starts. Had to sit park, but he's a genuine racehorse, this guy. He's a four-year-old. He's picked a bad year to be a four-year-old but gee, he's in good form. I thought he might lack the speed to be an open class horse. Maybe he still does, but in this grade, he's very, very good and, and he's been beautifully placed. He's been able to race the absolute non-open class horses, but for very good stakes. Yeah, he's now won nine of 22 and uh, up over $118,000 in stakes. And here's Gore Bay getting back in form. Blair Orange had been driving my wee man and he'd been brave throughout. This horse missed away, as did the runner-up Tyron's better, Ella, and uh, she stormed home. There wasn't much between them. No, and a horse again who I thought could have ended up just being sold or mucking around in the grades. And it raises the question for you, because I don't bet on the grass a lot, because I'll be honest, I really struggle to transition the form. I can't work out what horses are going to cop it, and some horses seem to cop it one week and not another. Do you think there's a trick to the grass track betting? Is there, is there when you line up for the grass, do you go on grass track form, or do you go on overall form? It definitely has an influence, and particularly horses often I find race well at Motokarara, they race well there every time they yep. go there. But I mean, Gore Bay's been competitive at Addington, um, and, and Zadaka obviously has been all the way through to open company, so when it ran second there, that didn't surprise me at all, and it's gone on with it. So you've got to factor it in, Michael, but what I would say is a good horse is generally a good horse, and the tracks are that good now, like often the firm track at the Mott, they're running home in 58, 28, which is fast track form, you know, so um, yeah, I, I there's a bit of both. I agree with you, I think good horses are good horses, I think the one thing that changes the entire dynamic is if the grass is too long, which most times these days it's not, or it rains. Yeah, that Crobble meeting. I was uh, the night before. This is this is an idea. You're going to tell me about Young Stranger, exactly. Aren't you? There was two good three-year-olds, two really good three-year-olds uh, in in a race at Cromwell. And the night before, I was talking to some of the boys down there and asking how the team was going. They said, "Oh, it's going to start raining tomorrow." So I backed Young Stranger, not for big money, but I backed it because it was like nine bucks. By the time I got to the race, it started favourite because the young, speedy, good, even if they're all stars type horses, you don't want to be on them when it rains. Yeah, you want those old, tough, nuggety, flankers from the South Island type <laughs> horses. And Young Stranger and was one of those. I'll be honest, I think it was the only proper bet I had on a, on a grass track. I will season. guarantee you this. It'll be the only one-eyed trotter you've ever backed. Uh, He's only got one eye. Hmm. But, but, uh, but, but, what, what would you like me to speechless. say? What, what would you like me to say? Well, have that? you backed a one-eyed trotter before? A, a, a trotter that can see out of only one eye. I, I don't usually inspect their eyes, Greg, before I back them. <laughs> So, and, and you could have made that up and I still can't prove it's wrong, so I'm just going to... I knew you wouldn't know that let, fact. Let's move on. Anyway, right, let's go to a place that you know reasonably well, Cambridge, and some of the features out of there since we've been away, the Flying Stakes, how many, how many eyes has he got? I have no idea. OK, so here's Temporale. It's a ridiculous discussion. I, I sort of, again, was starting to doubt where he was over the spring, and here he is beating another very good horse in Speeding Spur. Gate speed's been crucial for him, as we'll see later in the show. Maybe he's just had a couple of confidence-boosting kills because that 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 was a good performance beating a Millennia Trotter. Yeah, it was, and it was also good to see Massive Metro handle the left-handed way of going. Again. Gives him a lot more options going forward. Now here's a race I watched, and I thought to myself, Mark Purden stuffed this up. He gave the lead to Star Galleria and gave it to him, 
and Star Gallery has sprinted home that quick. You thought, Mark, what have you done here? <laughs> Little do I know. I even put that to Mark. I said, did you almost stuff this up? He said, going down the back straight on, turn it up. I thought to myself, oh no, what have I done? Nightmare. And then mm. he said, top of the straight, he went straight past Star Galleria, who's a good horse and one of the favourites for the Hunter Cup. And we'll see him winning, this, of course, on Saturday night. This might be the best horse in the country. I'm not sure, but he might be. All right, here's the futurity. And this, again, a feel-good story because a good horse is back in winning form. And gate speed, absolutely crucial. Jack's legend up the passing lane here. Blasted across the stable mate on the cards at the start, then caught the trail. Scotty Phelan doing the driving here because Zach chose to drive on the cards. I think on the cards might be the better stayer and I think Jack's legend's faster and that gate speed's wicked. They're gonna stay at home with him. They'll go in about three weeks time, there's a race and then they'll head into the, uh, what was the cup carnivals now? City the of Auckland carnival. free for all or City something of like that. Free yep. for all. I don't know where he stands in the picking order these days because in a New Zealand Cup or a free-for-all or an Auckland Cup, you've always got to factor him in. But is he going to win those races? I don't know. And he's only five. You keep, he's been around for such a long period of time. I still would love to see him go to Menango and try and, and run a sub-150 mile. But is there any particular His last that, win, Michael, incidentally, had come in the Holmes DG in October of 2017. Yeah. He'd placed a heap of times, including those New Zealand Cup and, uh, of course, uh, New Zealand free-for-alls, but he hadn't won, so it was good to see him win again. I, I, I honestly believe the best place for him to race is Perth. But some horses don't cop Perth, but with that gate speed, and he just goes the same speed, and he's very, very quick, I think Perth, he'd be a wicked animal. But... That pro probably means selling him because what about most of the connections don't want to race on the cards. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you do with him? Because he, again, well, he's, think, in a, he's in I a think tough he's, year. He's a lot newer yes. to the grade, so he, he could potentially end up. I think if you've got a really good staying horse in New Zealand, there's lots of options for you. But I think if you've got a speed horse, and Jack's Legends run second in the New Zealand Cup, so I'm not saying he can't stay, but. He'd be a wicked horse around Gloucester Park. But again, d does anybody want to send their horse there to race? Because it's not like you can well, pop the a horse might be because he's owned by Dennis Thompson. No, uh, um, he, he, he wants to race a good horse and he's got himself one. So. And, and it raises a question we've spoken about many times before. What do you do with these horses? And you sometimes think, well, you can't beat Mark and Natalie's horses, so would you sell them? But the bottom line is, as we saw the other day with some of the scratchings and the machinations that have gone into races like the Great Southern Star, sometimes you've just got to roll the dice and take your chance, Greg. Yeah, exactly. Right, we're going to roll the dice into a break. When we come back, a big night it was on Saturday night out of Melton and Victoria. We'll go back and review that and preview what's ahead this Saturday. With Woodlands, of course, time for us to get across the Tasman and go back and review what happened on Saturday night, Michael, because we thought we had a big chance in the Great Southern Star, but about this point, things changed with the favourite. Temporale went great, and Dance Craze, who we've seen, did this. Hit the lead together from Red Hot Tooth and Tough Monarch. Dance Craze the outside and Temporale. Dance Craze in front and Dance Craze is too good. Beat Temporale and Sky Petite. Brilliant performance by her. Kiwi connection there. Mark Purden doing the steering and what a big night for him sitting in the bike. Remarkable, really. You'd think he would have the time to be driving other people's horses on race night, but he drove two group ones, that and Carla's Pixel. This one's out of Laco Karacha, who came to Auckland and won the Road Cup and broke down, winning the Road Cup. Um, we saw her at the Jewels, of course, she was very good. Very, very strange race because uh, once Tornado Valley was scratched on the morning of the race, got a scratch, it got infected, you thought Mark Cooler would just lead. Clint drove Mark Cooler beautifully. If Hurler had driven Mark Cooler like that, you'd be thrilled. But 
the horse massively underperformed, and that's what we're talking about, Tiger Tara. If he underperforms, well, then he's beatable. If he's not, if he doesn't, he's not. So here he is out of barrier two, and Clint just eases out and relaxes, Clint Ford this is, and ends up in the 1-1. One, one. Speeding Spur crosses them, and they go a really good clip, Greg. A really strong time. Amarito's son, who snuck into the race on the morning of the race, Cherie Tomlinson went forward. Um, basically, she got stuck there. There was nowhere else to go. And the Kiwis seemed to be in a good position. But, Greg, they, no excuses. They just stopped. They weren't good enough on the night. Now, there's been suggestions that for all three of them, the dust build-up in their lungs was an issue because, obviously, it was like 40 Well, I spoke to Amanda Tomlinson about degrees. that, and she told me on Sunday that they all got scoped and there was gunk not only in their two horses but also on Pat's Delight. Yep. So you would suggest going from what we have over here weather-wise to 45 degrees is tricky and some of our horses haven't copped it. Now, on Pat's Delight's been there for longer but he really underperformed in a race we're about to show you. So. And they all stayed at the same place. Yeah, I, mm. I think it's a night where you're willing to forgive, much like the um, sort of All-Stars performances at Miracle Mile night last year. I just think this is a night where a lot of horses didn't perform well. Temporale did really good in the second. Thought he was really good, considering he's probably better on the speed. And look, it was, it was just a weird race once Tornado Spur. Billy came out. Uh, speeding Spur, it sounds like, again, he might have had a slight lung issue, but it sounds like you're making excuses, but we know they're better than that. Yep. But a whole bunch of horses on the night in general didn't perform up to their best. And when you have those extreme temperatures, it does tend to affect the New Zealanders more, say for example, than horses in Sydney, like Muscle Factory, who won the Derby. They're slightly used to those. Our horses will never get used to them. And there's the occasional one who thrives on it, Greg, but not many. Let's go to that Derby and the winning performance of the horse that became the first three-year-old ever to break 150, of course, around Menangle. Found the front here. I'm another masterpiece trying to chase him down, but the time they went, there's a Kiwi connection here too, because 80% of this horse is owned by Clive and Rona Mackay, and I just spoke to them actually on the phone, Michael. They are over the moon with this guy. Every time he goes to the races, they get excited. They were there on Saturday night. There is a very good chance that he will, well he's obviously going to the New South Wales derby but he could be here in New Zealand uh, to go around in our derby. This horse was passed in for $12,000 at the sale so there's a bit of a warning for those going to the sales not all of them are going to be bet as the light champions he's a roll with Joe and on what happened the week before at Ballarat you could not back him to beat on another masterpiece. On another masterpiece handed him the lead, jogged to the front, sat parked outside him and crushed him. Yeah. Just goes to show you, once you get those extreme temperatures, you can get changes in form. He's a Sydney horse, he would cop it. Natalie did bag her own drive in that race. She, mm. she didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. He, he just he didn't race up to the form of a week earlier. And, and he is still a horse who can run places on another masterpiece. He's not ultimate sniper. So you're watching the horse coming in a barrier six who gets across, or barrier five it was, gets across pretty easily. Sure, Natalie might have punched up inside him, but I don't, I don't think she would have held him, to be honest. Yep. Those Sydney horses fly. Uh, she felt that else. later on when she handed the park positioned up that she then had to go around another horse. But this horse low, was low flying, 154, um, track record, three-year-old record, terrific run. Yep, he bolted him. There's no, you know, we can't just make excuses because New Zealand horses get beat. Yeah. No. He, he was beaten fair and square by a better horse who's partially owned in New Zealand. So he's very brave on another masterpiece and he'll always be in the fight. But he's not ultimate sniper. He's not Abby's three-year-old. And the horse he beat is a sub-150 horse. So ultimate said. sniper goes to the New South Wales derby to take him on. Now that'll be interesting. It will be. A and you would think the best version of him would win. But as we are seeing this week and we saw last year during that carnival, You've got to travel and not cop a virus and not, you know, have massive heat stroke problems and all the things that go wrong. So ultimate sniper for me is clearly still the best three-year-old in Australasia, Greg, but it's a lot harder. And, you, you know, when you travel and you're not in your own back lawn and also staff have to go some places and Mark and Natalie can't be everywhere. And there's more things that can fall through the cracks when you travel than when you're at home. Because when you're at home, most of those horses are absolutely at their peak. When you travel... As we saw with Lazarus last year, sometimes you're not. Other features out of Melton on Saturday mm. night. We did have Kiwi success, and this was a terrific performance because having to come wide around this final Ben Star Galleria was never going to be easy for him, and he picked up a fair horse here too. Yeah, Rapper's Delight's a good horse. Won an Inter-Dominion heat, and, and he's very good in front. Um, 
A star Galleria would have a wicked career in Australia because he's so fast. Being an art major, I'm not sure how long he'd cop it for. You know, the rugged racing might get to the bottom of him, but if he was trained in Victoria, he would win half the free-for-alls because he's just better than most of the horses there. Because Tiger Tara's a New South Wales horse. And he beat Rappers Delight, who's a serious free-for-all horse. He is um, his stablemate, utmost delight, sitting parked. And I said to Reed, man, you're probably going to sit parked here. She had no chance. They went 151 and change. She sat parked. She was very brave. And here's Marky Mark coming out wide on Carlos Pixel, who was retired in November. They brought it back into work in December for Dean Braun, who he has quite an association with. And it's a funny thing, isn't it, Greg? Like, we always think that maybe Nat's the better driver of Mark and Nat in Australia because Mark is always looking after his horses. Here he comes out and just drives two group ones from the second line and other people's horses. Have. It's just a reminder of how good he is. Here was the Bonanza, spank him of course. Uh, I'm Pat Salite in front. Right about here I thought, geez, travelling spank him, but he had a really smart horse on his back. He had a very smart sit sprinter on his back too, that's the key. So Spankham's probably a better horse than Poster Boy, but it's a hell of a training performance for Poster Boy to win fresh up. First up since the Breeders' Crown. Yep. It's a hell of a performance. And maybe this four-year-old battle wasn't quite as over as we thought it would be with all the horses and Chase Auckland got beat the other day at one angle. So maybe it's evening out because some have had hard racing, some are coming back. That Chariots of Fire, which is... Uh, coming up in three or four weeks and Menangle is going to be an absolute beauty. But yep, of course, he'll I, I, go around this week, won't he? Chase Orkin. Chase, Chase Orkin goes around in an MO. again yep. this week. And but he needs racing. He, he did need racing, but before he went across there, I didn't like his Pukekohe trial. And I said to Nat, I don't like this. And she said, oh no, Mark was happy enough. And I was like, he went around $1.35 the other day. I don't use Betfair. I'm not a person who likes to lay horses. I don't think it's the right thing to do in my job. I would have laid him. They were confident I wasn't. I didn't like what I saw at the trials. He'll kick back. I'm not, I'm not bagging the horse, but it's an awfully hard grade to come into, Greg, because these four-year-olds are wickedly fast, and you've got to come into it, and there's nowhere to hide. Do you also think, though, and often we talk about it now, going to Menangle first time, you need a couple of runs there. Like, I think he'll definitely derive a lot out of that first up run, but also the fact being first up at Menangle. So you go again this week, and then he can go into the pale face Adios? You can, yeah. but again, he's going to need to go 148 to win the Chariots. Yeah. You know, and, he, they could, they, and they seriously all could break that. He's coming out of three-year-old racing and he's having to learn to be an open-class horse in the space of four starts. I'm not saying he's not good enough to do that, but it's an awfully hard way to do it. Let's not forget, he didn't race since March, and he was a baby in March, like a flip-flopping teenage kid. Now he's a big boy, and you're up against the big boys, and they punch hard. So I'm not saying he won't win it, but he's going to need to be awfully Awfully good to win the Chariots Got to have a chance here now to have a look at uh, the WA pacing features from New Year's. And uh, the reigning Miracle Mile champion took out the Fremantle Cup, had the draw to dominate, and he did. Led Anthony Butt drove him beautifully. He only just falls in, but he's not a horse who tends to win by big margins. Um, I'm not entirely sure the staying trips are his go. But and he's not really a leader. I no, don't think he is. No, he, he got the job done. He was actually very game the following week when, once again, this is the WA Cup we're going to show you. Um, An expat uh, Lincoln rock, Farms horse. Yeah, rock and Roll Lincoln just led and did the same thing. People keep telling me all this rubbish that Gloucester Park's the best racing. Well, anybody who thinks Gloucester Park's the best racing doesn't understand basic physics, which is this. The smaller the track, the more disadvantaged you are by sitting parked or three wide. Yep, 11 out of the 12 in the WA Pacing Cup were Kiwi bred, and of course, obviously, this one was, uh, and one really mm. nice. He did a pretty good job here in New Zealand, but was doing an outstanding job there. Well, as I said, people keep telling you there's high pressure racing. He just led, jogged around, there was no pressure on the race at all, and sprinted up the straight, and he absolutely stopped in the last little bit and beat not a very strong field. That's not slagging the horse, that's just the facts of the matter. Uh, field Marshall was really good and can probably win a Miracle Mile again. But So do you think they've made the right decision with him, as in Tim Butt, by avoiding Victoria and going back and trying to defend his title? Well, he won a $300,000 race. Yes. So I think done, they've done the job. And Tiger Tara versus the Fixer, they're going to go to war this week in the Hunter Cup. And, Missing that war is not a bad thing for him. I still don't think he's a natural staying horse. As I said, he only fell into him without the race. G's been well trained, well driven. Um, but this just goes to show you, at Gloucester Park, if you can't lead or sit parked or your name's not on the mighty Quinn, 
You very, really well. And again, Tiger Ta Tara avoided those two races to go into this, the Hunter Cup, the AG Hunter Cup, which I still think it's been destroyed as it's narrow mobile and even more so this year because Tiger Tara is drawn to lead and therefore potentially do what he did in the Inter-Dominion final, run them off their feet. Barrier three, this barrier draw taking place last night. You're, you're right, should lead as he did in the Victoria Cup and the Inter-Dominion. If he performs to anything like his maximum, he'll win. Our Uncle Sam bizarrely becomes the danger, likely to sit on his back. There's no pressure here. There's just none. And oh, I love the fixer. He's a really, really good horse. But Greg, what does he do? Does he go rough up Tiger Tara? I mean, Lazarus roughed up Tiger Tara. And the fixer's a good horse, but he's not Lazarus. So how do you see this playing? Well, he, he's going to have to move along with Cruz Bromac and Star Galleria for that matter, and, and they can't work wide on this track and beat him effectively. I'd love to say they could, but very, very long bow to say they will. Y you would suggest Todd McCarthy, who drives Tiger Tarver, like the Inter Dominion will find the front, then can go as slow as he wants, and then just start winding it up and winding it up from the 1200. What would you do if you were driving the fixer? Um, first of all, I'd stuff it up. But secondly, <laughs> uh, you've got to move. You sit back, and you've got to move and get parked because during the Inter-Dominion we saw Cruz and Spankham come wide, and once you're wide and they just roll home in 54, doesn't matter who you are. Out of play. So you've got to get parked sooner rather than later and hope that somebody else comes around and gives you the 1-1. One -one. Bottom line is if Tiger Tara produces his best, he almost certainly will win. The fix is a very good horse, and maybe he can beat him, but from a betting point of view, you want about $7 to find that out because... In the New Zealand Cup, if you put Tiger Tara on the marker picks, he would have won. In the Victoria Cup and the Inter-Dominion, he was on the marker picks and, and he did win. Mm. And as we said way back in October when we started doing this show, you remove Lazarus from life the last three years. Tiger Tara has won two New Zealand Cups and earlier Inter-Dominion because he would have won in Perth. Mm. Leading, he absolutely would have won and he'd be rated a champion. But because Lazarus was so dominant over him, he wasn't rated a champion. Lazarus is gone. Tiger Tara is the best horse in Australasia. Now, the fixer might close that gap. Turn it up might close that gap. But they're not drawn to lead at Melton on Saturday night, Greg. And he is. That's a leader's track. There's no doubt about that at all. The uh, barrier draw last night was also a night uh, of significance, as it is each and every year. The 27th announcement of uh, the living legend with the Caduceus Club over there. And the first female has been inducted. Yeah, Kieran Manning. And... Kieran has broken down so many boundaries. Depending on who you ask, she's the most winningest female of either code in the world. She's won the most races. Um, she came into the game as, as a skinny little girl who went to, uh, to Norway and Sweden and drove night pistol. She's a lovely, lovely person. She must be a very, very good horse person. I've never been to their property, but they tell me it's amazing because she got Arden Rooney off Mark and Natalie, who are the best trainers in Australasia, and she won the New Zealand Cup with it, and she beat Smolder. Now, she got a fine for whip use here. Um, so that's, I shouldn't be laughing, but it's relatively funny because we're talking about how wonderful she is. But Greg, you know her. She's a lovely, happy, um, engaging woman who loves her horses, who does an outstanding job, is good with the media, and must be, just by this piece of footage alone, a very, very good horse person. No question about that at all and of course she keeps on breaking down barriers. First ever female driver now alongside Natalie Rasmussen to have driven the New Zealand Cup winner and now she's the first inducted into that. And When you consider some of the names over the last previous 26 years, uh, even in the last few years, Mark Purden, uh, Lance Justice, I mean the, the biggest names get inducted as living legends and she's amongst she's them. She's more important than all of those because they didn't change the wheel at all. She changed it. Like She said to young 15-year-old females who are watching this show or watching another show 10 years ago, well, you can do this. Don't, and, and, and look at what happened in Australia. Don't, don't let them bully you. Yep. Lauren Tritton and Amanda Turnbull and Jodie Quinlan, and just the name's gone forever. Amy Tubbs, Amy Tubbs. drove a Victoria yep. Cup winner. There's so many of them. And, and what she said to them was, well, you don't have to be a stable hand. You can be a stable hand if you want. Mm. And it's not pony club for you. You can get out Kim there. Kim Fenning. Yeah, yep. Cherie Tomlinson. You can get out there and beat these guys at their own game. And when you have that positive reinforcement, there's no reason any young female through kids' carts watching this game, watching this show, can't drive a New Zealand Cup winner. You might need the right horse, but no one's going to stop you. And Victorian harness racing has been the absolute centre of that in the racing universe. There is no place 
on earth where females have excelled more and been given more opportunity in racing than in Victorian harness racing. And Kieran Manning, along with Lisa Justice, let's not forget her, started that ball rolling. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud to call her a friend. I think she's a wonderful person. The fact she gets an award for harness racing is just a bonus. Yeah, absolutely it is, and congratulations to her. Time for us to take a short break on your box seat. Addington Raceway Friday night will be worth a look, including the Garrards Premier Mares. Yes, the key lead-up race to the Breeders will be there on Friday night. to your box seat with a Woodland Star. Um, you're looking forward to the sales, Michael. We're talking 17, 18, 19, 20 of next month, which is pretty close, just quietly. i tell you what I'm looking forward to, Greg, and, and I've been at the galloping sales a lot this week. I'm looking forward to seeing whether we can pull our finger out of our butt. Because... Who's we? The industry. All mm. of us. Together. Right. I'll tell you a story. On Monday night, I'm at the, the galloping sales, and I'm just trying to learn some stuff. I'm mucking and talking to people. Harness racing trainer, big time harness racing, racing trainer, member of the Thousand Wing Club, comes up to the area I'm having a beer. I'm having a beer at the Waikato, Waikato stud area, and they do a good job. And he's only there because he's socialising. He's got his wife there and a couple of friends, and they're socialising because it's a good place to go look at things and have a glass of wine. Karen Fenton Ellis from Tiaka is here, and we all start talking, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, two minutes later, he bought a share on a horse. Right. Two minutes later, he had said, well, I'll put, I'll put, I'm not going to tell you who it was, and so I'm not telling his wife's name. She, she'll go in for 10%. Bought a share in a horse. Goes to prove to you one thing. If you get people to the sales ground, you're more chance of selling them a share in a horse than yeah. if you don't. There's no chance, no chance on God's earth they buy a share in a horse unless they're talking to Kate. You get caught up in the hype, all that sort but of also, stuff. But also, also, it, it sounds like fun. Now, what we need to do, we have a couple of mini hospitality areas, is stop mucking around. Invest to get return. Unless the sales ground, and Karaka is the best sales ground in the world, unless it gives you a reason to go there and you feel good about it, then you're not gonna sell horses to anybody, apart from each other. And here's, and I'm not, I'm not preaching to people, I'm telling you what I've learnt this week. When our trainers go to the sales, don't sit there and drink beer with your mates. Don't, because you're not gonna meet anybody new doing that. If I wanna have a beer with you, I'm Dressed not gonna, in your shorts and t-shirt. Go there and hustle and sell. I, I, try, I bought a horse, two years ago, and it was about 40 lots on the end of the catalogue, couldn't find a bloke to look at it for me. I, I don't know the confirmations. I, long story short, it looked correct enough. I dragged Josh Dickey in to do it. Josh Dickey now trains all since one, two races. You know what? If I was the galloping sales, I'd have Andrew Forsman, Stephen Marsh, but mate, come, oh, mate, I'll look at the horse for you, mate, we'll look at it, we'll get it vetted. Mate, the people just constantly want to help you. We have pick guys, and I'm not blaming people. Harness racing people tend to be quite conservative, and they like to know, they know who they know, and they like who they know. But there'll be people sitting there 50 lots from the end, having a corona with their mates in the bar. If that's why, how you want to spend the sales, then don't complain to me about the fact you're not making any money, Greg. I, I can tell you, you, we can give them an example of how to do it, of course, because you've been talking to the team from New Zealand Bloodstock and you can get involved in this, can't you? By, uh, by They'll give you a decent finance package as well. They will. They'll let you finance a horse at a relatively competitive rate. And what they'll let you do with that is they're going to have a, a ready-to-run sale. So you've got two options. Then This is how the gallops do it, obviously. And we're not saying the gallops are the all be all and end all. There's a lot more money. We understand that. And I'm not saying you're going to have a tent lot Waikato stud, but you're not going to make get any owners sitting down having a beer with your mates. So they can finance a horse for you, and they insure it because, obviously, in case it breaks down, they get the money back, and it costs about a $500 fee. And then the horse is insured, and you pay, say it's 10%. They're, they're going to come up with a final figure. Now... The ready-to-run sales about nine months later. So let's a magical figure. You bought a horse for 50k. You bought a horse for 50k. The interest of that 10% over the course of years five thousand dollars. You're insure, you, you, you've got it on finance for nine months. So it costs you thirty seven hundred dollars, Greg. Now yes, it's easy to say because it's not my money, but that gives you the opportunity without digging into your mortgage or moving into your business equity. To, to finance a horse, which if you think you can do it, and not everybody can, get it up for the RTR or 
trial it and sell it to Australia, and that market's not going anywhere. I reckon that's, that's, that's handy. I, I'm considering doing it with one of mine. I'm considering going there and buying a horse and trying to find a trainer if someone will talk to me and not be in the bar and send it to them to train and say, get this thing up, whiz it up, and we'll sell it to somebody. Now, it's not as easy as it sounds. They break down, and there's lots of risk in that. I understand that. But... The opportunity's there. That's what you're saying. And the opportunity is... Karen Fenton and us were still selling horses at 9 o'clock on Monday night. And we've got to learn from this. If I have a Galloper trial, I have a voice report an hour after this trial. Sometimes I have a video. And, and I'm not saying it's easy to do, and it costs a lot of money, and I know that. But if we're going to compete with those people, you've got to at least investigate these things, Greg. And it's a constant learning curve. But that's why I also believe the sale is timed wrong. I reckon the sale at Karaka should be on a Sunday. Because you're not going to get people to leave work on Monday, Monday yep. go out and have a couple of jars. But on Sunday they might get out there and you kick, some, yeah. kick some tyres. I reckon that sale should be on Sunday and we've got to try and find a way to move the sale, start of the sale, away from Monday. That's right. my honest opinion. All right, I'm pleased to ask about that because that took up a bit of time, didn't it? For the show. It did. Mm. You know what? It's something I'm passionate about. Oh, I know, about. I know that. I'm passionate that. about it, Greg, because you don't get owners in the middle of winter. You get them at sales time. Yeah. I watched Karen and David the other day, and some people may not like, not like, may not like the way Tiago do business. It was incredible. They do business, though, it's don't they? It's incredibly polished. And a harness racing thousand win driver went and bought a horse off them just like that. Well, there you go. Right. Let's get into the Premier Mears with uh, Garrards and... It's a pretty hot field, isn't it? Uh, headed up by Better's Heart from the inside. De Barber resumed last week, went a great race. Dizzy Miss Lizzie is a Group 1 winner of the Jewels, of course. Mossdale Rose has very good gate speed. Ali Mack won last time in sensational time on New Year's Eve. Dream About Me is a million dollar mare. And you've got the two Telfer runners in Tiger Swift and Step Up. 12 going to the post and the $50,000 feature at Addington on Friday night. Well, that was a nice speech, but you and I both know almost certainly is going to win this, don't we? Probably. Yes. Mm. Dream About Me is a very, very, very good mare, but Ali Mack is the new legs on the block, and I'll be stunned if she doesn't win. OK, well, let's go back and have a look at a couple of performances to encourage you to think the same, maybe. Uh, this was a tremendous run from her running down on the cards. I think maybe the run of the summer. Good horse in front, super quick mile rate, sat three wide the entire trip. If a good open class pacer did this, you would say, man, he's a good horse, well, he's a sheep. Yeah, and this was a tremendous run and a 51.6 mile rate, an awesome performance from her. Uh, she's been freshened up since that, got over it, got a, a month to get over it. On the cards has gone and run second at Cambridge uh, behind Jack's legend and has the advantage of barrier six as opposed to Dream About Me, who's come up with the nine. I, I, I didn't know how she would come back because she was brained by She's All Rock at the end of her um, three-year-old career, but she got trapped wide on one of those occasions in the jewels. And the top dog, yes, I suppose, has to be Dream About Me, but I'm, I'm just not sure, Greg. She, here she is. In the Queen of Hearts. Winning the Queen of Hearts. A and, and Ellie Mack comes out of the 1-1 one -one and runs her close enough. So put her in front, yeah, she, she probably still wins a race like this, but I don't see her being in front this week, and therefore Ali Mack must have the advantage. Yeah, a big advantage. Uh, so here she was. She wins comfortably in the end. We know she doesn't win by big margins, but when you've amassed $1.2 million, um, you don't have to win by much, it's just winning, and she keeps on doing it. Michael, she's won 23 out of 39 starts. She's a great, great horse, but I, I think maybe her absolute best form is behind her, and when you say things like that, people want to slag you if you're wrong, but I'm not here to have a love fest for horses, I'm here to try and help people win money. And, and I just can't not back Ali Mack in this race to beat her. What the bookies open them will be interesting, I reckon they might open them a dollar fifty, dollar sixty. Ali Mack, two eighty. the other You one. think? Yep. Really? I reckon she'll be red hot. OK. But the, um, the bookies will go on draws. Last week, I want to go back and show one of the key lead-up races uh, for you, just outside of those two very good mares. Here's Nandolo in front. Now, you got away with the 66-second uh, first half of the last mile, but out of this race comes uh, Step Up, who finished second. Sat Park did a great job. Of course, Mossdale Rose is in this too, so... 
Uh, those two uh, mares both went good races. Nandolo's a good horse, but when he's able to sprint home as quickly as what he did, 56 and 26, I think it was, he was never going to get run down. The other lead-up race had Dizzy Miss Lizzie in it, um, and she went a very good race too. And I think from her barrier, she's a decent place chance. I think if you put any of those horses you just mentioned, um, obviously Nandolo being the exception because it's not a mare, you put them on the back of an Ali Mac or a Dream About Me, they're really in play. You put them three back on the outside and they've probably got no chance. And that's just the reality of racing at this level when they go that fast. So the marker pegs is crucial. It's going to be crucial at Melton. It's even crucial at Addington because once those good, best, and a lot of them are Purden, Rasmussen horses, get on the front end and roll, Greg, when they're rolling hard in 54-5 and you're trying to make ground, you're flat out keeping up, let alone making ground then sprinting past. It, it, sometimes it happens, but not very often. And it's a very bad betting strategy to be betting on it happening unless you're getting huge money. It was good to have the Group 1 winning trotter. Great things happen back at Addington Raceway on Friday night. And here's the field for a smallish free-for-all, if you like. Uh, unfortunately, the Dominator comes out. I'm not convinced at all that this horse is back to his best. But he was good enough to win last week. And looking at that field, outside of Bell's son, who I think might give him something to think about on Friday night, he probably should win again. I think Gavin's had to work really hard on this horse. Here he is leading last week and look, he's been doing a bit of training on the beach. It's not easy. He's not the best gated horse in the world. He's awfully brave, but <clears throat> excuse me, I, I, I'm not sure we'll ever see his true potential realised, Greg, because he has had so many issues. I wish Gavin the best of luck with him because he is Gavin's pin-up horse, but yeah, look, I think he'll win this. Um, I don't want to be jumping on him in a group one anytime soon until he's proven that he can maintain this form over a long period of time. Yep, but it was win 15 at start 37 for him and he uh, is a very good horse and he'll get his chance, albeit off the 30 metres, but he's only got five rivals so um, he should quickly make up the ground there and uh, therefore... Well also he gets the respect to get around them and probably lead unless it's Belson in front. Yeah. Um, but He's one of those horses who, again, he could win a Group 1. He has won a Group 1 before, the New Zealand trotting free for all in very, very quick time. But something about him now, I'm not sure he's let me down, but his body's let him down enough times that I don't want to be taking short odds in a Group 1. I'm happy enough to take short odds this week, though. We've got some milestones that we need to have a look at. Uh, and uh, Robbie Close got to 200 wins. Steve Dolan trained his uh, 100th win the other night. Uh, David Thompson got to 50. And our first up winners, uh, Jesse Alford, uh, Kieran Tomlinson and Bruce Hadley. And a couple of those we will get a chance to hear from over the next few weeks. And uh, Kieran Tomlinson achieved win number one, driving for her granddad, a very special moment for her and the family, and I got a chance to catch up with her at the Mott on Sunday. Well, that must have been a huge thrill. I know it was a wee while coming, but uh, win number one, a big, big moment for you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, she was a horse who had broken down in a past life before, so, um, and we brought her back in after she had a dead foal two years ago. So it was really good um, just to finally get that win with her because it was a, it was when she was going to break down, not an if. So it just looks good for her as a broodmare as well. Here's yeah, Zara we're talking about, which effectively she was brought back in, A, for you to have a drive regularly, but also Cherie. So, um, yeah, for Grandad to do that and to win your first race uh, for the family was pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely, you know. Um, it was Cherie's drive and Cherie had another drive in the race so it was good that she hopped off to give me a go because she knew that um, Zara was obviously the favourite in the race so um, it was really good and driving in Granddad's colours, getting the win on a trotter as well. As much as I would have loved it to be Mordecai, my own one, um, I, was so, I was very glad it was on a trotter and won a Granddad's. And you'd had several seconds so I think you were miles overdue. Just before you go, good luck with uh, uh, win number two, I'm sure it won't be far away. Can you chuck those glasses on because I'd love to see you driving them. No, not really, but they look pretty good. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
early in the home straight for your box seat, Michael, and we've got a lot of action to come. Harness racing wise domestically, uh, Wyndham, they've got an eight race card there Thursday afternoon, 3.37. They've got the summer classic there with Marshall's excavation. Uh, Otaki, nine race uh, card there, 2.56, including the Grant Plumbing Wellington Trotting Cup, $10,000. Former New Zealand Cup contender Imola started. Yeah, it does too. Well spotted, Michael. Meeting eight, uh, we'll be adding to Naz's the norm. Nine races there, 5.23, the first $50,000 in the Group 2 Garrard's Premier Mears Championship and a $25,000 pick six there. The Hanley Formula Orari Challenge Stakes is for $12,000 and features the reigning two year old trotter of the year. And Hanshul Kam is back um, and he's still number one seed, but man, this is a crop of three year old trotters. Whew. Old Tacky on uh, Sunday will complete the two days uh, in the lower North Island and Wyndham. They have two days this week as well. The $15,000 Country Cup Series final there, 10 races, 12 19 the start time. And Rangiora, they have the Rangiora Equine Services Ambali Cup, $20,000 on Waitangi Day. Uh, we'll also have a box seat that day, but uh, yeah, the Waitangi Day meeting is always uh, well supported. There'll be a big crowd there. Interesting seeing those little red pins go around the country. Obviously, the Future Venues Plan came out for the Galloping community yesterday, and they're talking about the tracks they want to close. It'll be interesting to see how that impacts the harness racing tracks. For example, Reefton. Reefton is no longer going to be a galloping track. Does it stay as a harness racing track? Yeah, good point. Uh, um, I know that <coughs> Timaru was on the original Yes, uh, so Timaru's been saved, mm. which, and so it should be. Closing the home of Farlet was a ridiculous suggestion. Um, but Marlborough is the other one. They're looking at closing down. I'm not so sure they'll save that for harness racing. I don't know. I don't yep, know the answer to that. So at some stage in the next so couple of weeks... That track at yep. Marlborough, but Nelson don't, they lease it off the so AMP or whatever. We'll so. try and get hold of the bosses at Harness Racing New Zealand, because everybody's had a break and people are now trying to get their minds around what's going on, but it'd be interesting to see whether some of these tracks, like for example, Reefton's the best example, it's very popular there, but they wouldn't race three days at Westport, so does that circuit become two days? Or do they go to a moto and race there? I, I don't know the answer to those things, so we'll try and get some clarification because um, that, that was only released yesterday. Woodlands are great supporters of ours, and they've got some runners uh, this week. Dr Tim, he just keeps on going great races. He's got barrier one in race number three. Yeah, tell, hard tell, me, to beat. tell me about Virgil. This is interesting. Yeah. This so, is a horse that Gene Fees purchased at the Wingling sale. I think she paid 150 and his name was Pacing Delight or something like that. No, mm. um... It doesn't pacing mean, Lou. It was Pacing Lou, now it's Virgil. Really it was called then, has trolled up OK. There's three of, of the all-stars in there. Why but, would you call him Virgil? Not really sure. We'll have to ask Jean Feast why she called. But the Sweet Lou's are doing a good job. They are. And Dream Bat Me obviously goes around uh, in a decent race. The Garrard's I, I wouldn't have called it Premier Mears. I would have called it something else. Well, that's good. You'll get the opportunity over the next three weeks or something. To call it um, something else. The American boys all had a wash today. Hmm, Sweet Lou. He's got a big white noggin, hasn't he? He has. Rather. So, um, uh, if you buy a horse at the sales, would you, do you change their names? Or could, like, you know, something. It's a little bit like placing a bet on the wrong horse. It, it raises the question, should we name our horses before they go to the sales? Obviously the gallopers aren't. Well, I'll, you can I'll, waste a name. I would be happy to see it, them not named. Like, yeah. I'll be honest, I bought a horse years ago and it was from the Shard family and they're lovely people with this business. They do yes. a super job with their horses and they, they turn them out beautiful. But I don't want their brand on my horse. Yeah. And, and they and want you to keep their brand on their horse. One hundred percent, and I respect that fully. And you are the brand. But when I changed the horse's name, it was Spicy. It was Spicy. It was called Spicy Shard. So we changed the name. It wasn't just my decision. We changed her name, and then that name's gone, and they can't get it back. So, yeah, you got to wonder why we do it. There's there's two things which we have to change. I think that's one because there's no point naming them in advance. There's, there's no reason to do it. And secondly, the black type thing's getting farcical. And as we get closer to the sales, I looked at the catalogue. There's horses in here with black type, and they've got 159 Rand Ashburton. Yeah. I mean, you'd be half a chance back in your coast to coast oh, days to go 59 Rand Ashburton. Stop it. Stop it. Now, Let's move on to now. something far more realistic than that. Uh, Team Teal is you go, back. You, you go 2-5. 1 <laughs> 1st of February through to the 10th of March. Explain to me how this works. I think it's wonderful, but explain to me exactly how it works this okay, time. Okay, over this period, uh, all female drivers in the country will drive in the Team Teal driving pants, and that's terrific this year. It's been an extension on what they've done in the past. We've got three ambassadors, Ali Barron, Sam Otley, and Nikki Chilcott, and they'll all drive in the full colours as well. 
for every win, $200 from Harness Race New Zealand, 100 from Woodlands Stud and 100 from every club and they're all participating if you want to donate. From the club involved? That's right, yep, where, okay. the, where the horse, where, where they win a race. Okay. Team Teal, uh, the website down the bottom there if you want to make a donation. I understand that both Westport and Reefton in their early March race meetings are looking to have a female only drivers, drivers in, a, in a race, so Team Teal driving in the race if you like. Um, that's all to be put together and it's a wonderful concept, it's been developed in Australia, we've picked it up and last year they raised a whole lot of money and they're going to raise a whole lot more this year. And that money goes towards research um, in the fight against ovarian cancer. And it's good because harness racing needs to embrace the community more than ever now, Greg. I mean, we need to be seen as responsible members of the community. Yep. And I think we do through kids' carts and that sort of stuff, but you've got to help your communities. Like rugby does not rugby league do it, you know, and it's, it's a way of saying to people, look, come along because it's not just about the coin. So I think it's really cool. I'm glad Harness Racing New Zealand is so behind. Good luck to Courtney and the team putting that yeah, together. 100%. Because... And, and, and yeah, it's, it, it can only be good. At any time anytime money's raised to fight the evil that is cancer, it can only be good. And I think we're going to have uh, at... Alexandra Park's Derby meeting, uh, Celebrity Sulky Race, which is all based around the Team Teal as well. So, um, yep, there's plenty going on. Go to hrnz.co.nz and you'll get further details on that. Now, the opportunity for someone to join in our tipping competition, the Beat the Brand in 2019. That's a ridiculous name, but I like it. Yep, and um, everyone's going to be trying to beat you. Get a hold of us with those uh, details down the bottom of the screen, the box seat at tab.co.nz, probably the best. Uh, I'll, make a, I'll make a deal. If the person who comes in as our guest tipster yes. beats me, yes. no matter where they are in the country, I will fly to their property and mow their lawn and you can record it and put it in the boxes. <laughs> will you do the edges as well? I don't say I would do a good job mowing your lawn. And I'm will you do the edges as well? Yeah. Okay, cool. you, But you've got to beat With me. a pair of scissors. Fair and square. Fair yeah. and square. If the person who comes in... So how long are we going to run it over because we've got 20 weeks basically till the harness jewels? I'm not, mowing so, the lawn so on, I'm not mowing the lawn in winter. No, so let's do it for 10 weeks. We'll do it for 10 weeks like the previous You're one was. You're just making this up on the fly. Well, I am. 10 weeks, that'll do. And then someone else can have a go and you can do something else ridiculous for them if they beat you. Yeah, or okay. me, maybe. It's I fair. Try and win but it anyway, so it's basically you have a $100 bet per week and it has to be win or... Is it a complete place? Just win or place. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Oh, no, win only. So how, how do they do it through? again? Is there an email address thing? Yep. The box seat at I'll do this to the power to make it magically appear, but it yeah. doesn't work. Oh, there it is. No, it doesn't. Oh, uh, Hunter Cup for you this oh, week. I can't read You'll be over small. there. You'll get us a whole lot of stuff to bring back for next week's show. We'll be off to wrap that up at Stellard Cup as well. Mm. So, uh, And, of course, a big night at Menangle too this week. Yeah. Um, Ashley Lowcast was wicked there last week. He was good, wasn't he? I it? think it's the fourth time I said wicked in the show. I don't know where that came from. But he was awesome. Really, really good. I think Ashley Lowcast is our best chance of winning the Chariots of Fire. Okay. Yeah. There's a bit of a statement. All right, yeah. that's been your box seat. Oh, Pleased to be back. One thing, you have to supply the lawn mark because I don't have one. All right, very good. I've got a ride on. Yeah, have that's you? another story for oh, another day. Be fun. Very good. All right, that's been your box seat. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you in a week.